Hello there, my name is Song. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of Turnbase Toolkit. So, as you can see here, I got a, pro a project with Turnbase Toolkit installed. So, um, let's get started. So, the first thing you should know, there's a top panel here which uh, intend to assist you to do everything. So to start a new scene, you don't need to drag the prefabs, build the scene from scratch. Instead, you just click new scene. It will set everything up nicely for you. As you can see, you got a nice template here, which you can start work with. And next on, we look at the hierarchy. So it is very simple if you look at it. Uh, it contains several base con uh, components. The first, they are all named accordingly, so you can tell probably from from the names what uh, each component is doing. So audio manager handles the sound, camera control is basically the camera, game control handles all the game logic and stuff, hex grid manager handle uh, control the grid itself, UI of course is the UI component which use end UI as you can see here. So um, I'm going to run you through the rest of the top panel. So you have the rest here is the editor you have unit editor, uh, ability editor, collectibles, damage armor table. We'll go through that later on. But for now, let's focus on the core component, game control. So game control here is a component which you define all the game rules. So you can select, you can set up, um, quickly set up all the rules you want to use here. As you can see, all the variables here are comes with two tip. So you can just hover over them and know what each of them are intent for exactly. So we have the turn mode. You can select different turn mode. As you can see, if you select them, each of them will give you an explanation of what they are for. So and we have oh, ignore this label for now. It's a small bug. So this is actually data mode. So in which you select to use the current setup for this level or use persistent data you carry on from the other scene and you have the movement rule um, which tells the unit to use one AP for a move or use one AP for a tile and attack and this is just um, the point Never mind, we'll, we'll gloss through this. This is not not as important now. Um, and then we'll have the enable unit placement. You want the player to be able to place their own unit at the start if they have any. That's it. And enable counter attack um, means unit will counter attack um, will do perform a counter attack to any of their attacker, like in some of the game you've seen. Probably not XCOM, but. I play King's Bounty that any melee unit can counter attack back to any melee attacker. So that's that's the idea. And restore new AP at new round. In this game, I should explain first. In this game, each unit has a has an AP, uh, which is some sort of energy bar which you can then use to perform unit ability or move or even attack should you wish you can set up the rules here I forgot to explain this so if you want to you need to use AP for every move they, they do you can do that or you can just use the AP to use the ability you can even ignore that alright so and the, the idea is you can set up the rules so that you restore full AP at every new round so the unit has a certain limited amount of AP to use for the player to decide if they want to move, attack, or use ability, or they can accumulate AP over each round. There's a we'll, we'll, we'll go into that later, which means the other way around. The unit accumulate AP over rounds, and then they at certain point when they accumulate enough of AP, they can use the ab unit ability to do something special. So that's the idea, and allow movement after attack, allow ability after attack so this is very basic uh, basically if you wanna rules like XCOM where you sh after you fire or you attack you can't move anymore or you can 
do a quick attack and then retreat move further to a safer point so that's up to you then finally we have the action cam which is um, oh, oh, we can probably show that later so I'll, I'll show that later and we have the starting unit so this is basically just say what what you need you want the player to start with in this given map of course uh, there are options to bring it over from previous level but for now I'll, I'll just show you this it's very simple so you, you do this probably it will work so okay it doesn't so right doesn't matter we'll, we'll go into the example for that now let's go to this this is the important bit so this is how you set up set up the grid uh, the hex grid right so you have one two components here this is for editing the grid we'll go through that later for now let me focus on the hex grid manager so this is what you use to generate the grid so you can just click generate to regenerate obviously it does nothing now but I'll let's try to set a walkable rate to 0.2 that means 20% of this tile won't be walkable so there you go you can see the difference and you can change the size of course um, let's change it to 5 much smaller or bigger 15 so it's up to you but for now I wouldn't recommend you to go above 40 um, it takes quite a while to generate something that big um, uh, due to the nature of each hex style is a transform object and unity is taking time to instantiate each of them but I'll, I'll try to get around that and then you can set the grid size so it's going to look bigger now or smaller and then the length the, the height where you want it to so it will go higher typically I'll set it at zero and then grid to size grid to tile size ratio you can give it a nice spacing by adjusting this I'll change it to 1.1 so you can see there's a small spacing there you can then make it bigger 1.2 or you can make it the, the tile overlap even smaller right. this is too much obviously so I wouldn't recommend you to go past 0 0.9 or higher than 1.2 um, then we have the unwalkable tile rate. I have already explained this how much of the tile is not walkable, and this is the prefab for each tile. As I explained, each of this tile is actually uh, a single transform, right? So you see, all of them are here, and these are all instantiated using a prefab, of, co of course, which is placed in resource hex tile. Yep, this is the one. So obviously you can use your own hex now should you wish right so just assign them here and then the indicators you can leave this for um, for MC for the most part and then we have the player placement unit which is you define the area where the player can place their own unit if they have any setup here so that is probably why it doesn't work just now because I didn't I never set up an area so it is a square so basically you can set the start position and the width let's say 10 and 10 and oh, not a very good one so you can see there's a square being drawn on, on the scene view so you can adjust the position and how this works is every hex style that is covered in this square will be set as um, available for unit placement All right. So then we'll go to the faction. This is for the generator to procedurally place in unit. So you can add in faction, you can add area. This works similar as uh, player placement area. So let's give it something. So you see, you, you can adjust the color. This is just for debug, of course, uh, to, to make your life easier when editing the scene and then you can set how many units let's just say 2 
and the possible you need to spawn there so you can make it so that it spawns just one type of unit or give it an option of 6 you need to spawn from spawn 2 from 6 of this okay so it's very simple uh, let's keep it simple 2 so enforcer and guardian okay now if I generate you see there will be 2 unit and this unit placement area will be set as available for unit placement the, the tile will become greenish in color say indicate that it can be used to place unit or yeah that's it and another important thing is the ID the faction so basically you can have multiple faction and each of them are hostile to each other obviously but zero are the default of ID for player faction that means player will always control the faction ID as zero so the rest has to be larger than zero if you can also make it so that all these are hostile unit and then you let the player hand place some units into some corner so basically that's the idea okay, so you can see uh, it's very convenient once you got the thing set up and then we can further modify this using this grid painter so basically you just need to enable it and you can select from tree edit mode how when you want to edit any of this so I can set it to unworkable okay I'll set it to unique placement now I'll click on that all this will change all right or I can set it to unworkable like this and I can remove this from the scene if you look at it you can't see it anymore over here because I've taken them off Okay, so if you wish to have something very specific, some very specific hex pattern, you can always generate a large, larger grid and then trim it off and shape it however you like. Okay, so you can edit other features as well. You can even edit the defend modifier. So if you click at all, there will be numbers showing up in each tile indicating, okay, the defend modifier for this tile is zero. So you can I want to set it to 0.5. Remember, um, one is actually the maximum that will give a 100% defense bonus to the unit on the tile. So you never want to set it above zero unless in very some very extreme case. So I have it at 0.5. So now I click on it. This will be clear set to 0.5. Now if I change it to damage modifier, nothing. All right. So I can again set here to one damage modifier is actually okay I give it one extra damage to every unit within this town okay I can even give it a ne negative value so you can see the arrow change okay so this is just some helper to visual helper to let you know to get give you a quick glance of what is actually happened on the grid and then you can hand place unit as well again select the unit faction and just click on the tile obviously you can't place it on unworkable but there you go and then you have the collectible which were exactly the same as um, the unit all right now we'll go into the editor um, to add you need to you, know, you can you can probably tell how how do I have all this option readily available here for my unit okay so this is how I do it uh, for every unit you need to add them to unit manager so they are here so if you want to add a new unit let's say let me um, delete this peacekeeper one okay I remove it No, I can't find it. Um, okay, it is this guy here. So I need to bring back my unit major. Uh, 
I'll just drag it to there. Right, it's there again. And now you can effectively select it in anywhere which you might need to access the unique data pool. So again, after you do that, you can edit each of the unit this way using this and unit editor. So all the unit assigned to unit manager is here. So you can just select them and then modify all the stats. They all line up here. I'll probably make another video to explain all this later. So, but again, all of this are uh, comes with two tips. So you can tell what are they for by just hovering them, or you can go into the documentation which I've written, which showed about the same thing, right? Then you can have unit ability. You can just add unit ability to a unit by just highlight the unit ability here. And then let's move on to unit ability. You edit them by using unit ability manager. So you can create a new ability very easily or delete. Okay, and you set them out just like this. You name them, change the type, set the effect, and then you can even give it a visual effect or sound and the description, all the rules basically. So I have quite a few set up here. Some you have already seen in the demo. So that will probably give you a good idea of what you can do with this. And then the collectible manager, which work the same as the unit manager and the collectible editor which work approximate the same as the unit ability editor only it looks a bit different obviously but still you have the same concept so you decide which collectible to edit give it a name and then change the effect all right so and finally we have the damage armor table so this is to set up different type of armor type and damage type in in your game so it's used globally. You can set each unit to use as a specific type of armor and damage. And if you click on one of them, it will show you quickly here what it does to each other the armor type. So I have one 1 1.25, 1.25. So damage type is especially effective against damage armor type two and three, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, Again, you can add and delete armor just like that. And obviously, when deleted, it's a bit tricky, just like that. Okay, so basically, that's about it. That's the quick glance. And I'm sure there are some other things that I miss. But feel free to send me an email or contact me to ask any question. And yeah, so basically that's it. I'll probably make a few video more to show how to set up each creep, uh, each sorry, I mean unit specifically, um, to to fit the fit the usage. But yeah, thanks for watching so far. Um, bye.